Hi Booktube, it's Stephanie. So today I'm going to share with you the books that I purchased in March. And I've already filmed this once, well halfway through, if you could call it filmed when I didn't press record. Great. So I had an order to these books. I don't have an order anymore, so I will literally just go book by book as I pick them up. Now, for March, the all the books that I purchased at the February book sale in Sweden arrived. So I have a lot. Now, what I do every year when it comes to online is that I just click on everything that I've had on my wish list for a while in my head or on an actual wish list and then all the books that I'm interested in I just put them all on separate tabs like an ultimate wish list I would want to have all of them and then I go to click away some etc now what I then do is that I wait to the last day of the sale or even a week or two or like a week afterwards Two weeks what I was I did this year and usually some of them are gone because people have purchased them I think I had like 40 40 50 tabs up something like that and at the end of the sale one book had sold out <laughs> so I was like okay let's wait another week mm, I don't care um, that book that has sold out, we're back in stock. <laughs> so I waited another week. Two books have sold out. So I can't order, can't, I can't, I mean, obviously I can. I can order 50 books, but I refuse to. So I got less than that, and then I bought some books uh, secondhand and then in store because they had additional sales and they had put out more books physically in store. So yeah so as i said i used to have an order i don't have an order anymore i just need to yes so let's start with one that's outside of my comfort zone but that i have been interested in and that is if the market scan by sarah penner this is the historical fiction and the english title is um, the last Ap uh, apothecary and it has gotten pretty good reviews well actually I don't know but a lot of people were talking about it it's pretty short and this is a two lined uh, two timelined um, perspective we are following in the 1790s London where we have a woman pharmacist who runs an apothecary and she supplies women with poison so that they can po poison their abusive men well, the abusive men in their lives. And then we are following a person in today, today who kind of wants to solve these poison murders. I'm intrigued by this and it's pretty short, but it's definitely a book outside of my comfort zone. But the cover is glorious. Then I have one that I uh, borrowed from the library once, but I got it pretty cheap and I have been interested in it. I mean, it has, it has a dinosaur on the cover, so I mean, come on. This is Netraya by Louisa Wiesbrand. And this is a YA. I should not buy YA, but I do it anyway. I, I'm not in a YA mood, but ugh, okay. And this takes place in the afterlife. And we, afterlife, and we are following a girl who refuses to move on. And she's looking for a way back. And the person who has to make sure that she passes on is hunting after her and they end up in this world I think it has something to do with said dinosaur on the cover and they then need to try to survive yes it sounds fun I think it's a standalone so it's not too bad but yeah I'm not in a Y mood it's like oh crap then I have two books um, by the same author that's non-fiction the first one being Eklit Berättelser om slem, snu och andra sekret and Förgiftad Berättelser om fasor, formler och fjaskon now the first one is we we'll translate to gross stories about slime mucus and other secretions 
I think you all know what this is about. And then we have Poisoned. Stories about terrors, formulas and fiasco. I don't know. This is this particular book. I think, yeah, uh, mentions an, uh, another book by the author called Evil Chemistry. So this is kind of like a follow up, this uh, green one. So, yes, I'm intrigued. And yes, Evil Chemistry was the book that was sold out. Uh, the gross book I definitely just got because of the slime, mucus and other secretions. I was like, yes, yes, I want to read that. Let's go with non-fiction and a big one. This is the only one of them that I read. And I read it because I got a lot of books. But it's still just the only one I read. And that is Kalle Krieges Övergivna Platser by uh, Robert Greenville. And this is Abandoned Cold War Places. And this is a photo book in which, well, abandoned places. And a little bit about said abandoned place. And I just, I just love images like this. Like, just abandoned places in, in general just intrigues the crap out of me. I just, like, I just love it. And I really enjoy this one. I do wish that there would have been a little bit more history about uh, about the Cold War in general. Then I got Drömgångare by Samantha Shannon. And this is, uh, do, 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 what's the English title? Don't look it up. The Bone Season. I knew I could look it up without looking in the book. And this is a story set in a world where people ha uh, can be clairvoyant, except that's illegal. So just being born is a crime. And we are following a person who is clairvoyant and who, because she is, she's part of this underground world. And one day she gets found and gets taken somewhere. And apparently anything else is spoilery. I've heard so many good things about this series, and this one was dirt cheap, so I got it. Do I need another first book in a series that's 500 pages? No. I do not. Okay. It's not the over 500 pages, it's almost 500 pages. It doesn't make it better. Um, the next one, however, is just embarrassing. I should not have purchased this, but I did, because it was cheap. And I will get back to the first book. And I got Hollow Park by Jessica Townsend. I know. <laughs> I DNF the second book in the middle because I felt like that part of it was too repetitive for me. And I just needed to get a move on with uh, the readathon. Yeah. Uh, now, the Nevermore series follows a girl who... Well, everything is taking place in a fancy world worlds maybe and we are following a girl who has basically been told her entire life that she is a bad omen and she is the cause of misfortune everyone's misfortune on her birthday she's supposed to die but someone named Jupiter North saves her and takes her to Nevermore in which she competes to Young the Wonder Society. That's it. I did enjoy the first book. Um, yeah, I had fun with it. The sequel slightly more repetitive at the point where I'm at, so I'm like, I just need to pick it up to finish it because I have half left. Different rant. But now I have this one, which has to do with the plague. Then I have another non-fiction, and that is uh, Menschlichheten's Famtid by uh, Mashio Kaku. And the English title is The Future of Humanity, Transforming March, Interstellar Travel, Immortality, and a Destiny Beyond Earth. And this is a non-fiction about the latest research in robotics, nanotechnology, and biotechnology and how we are supposed to be able to survive on other planets. It sounded fun and I have had my eye on this book for a while, so I got it when it was on the sale. So the next non-fiction I got was this one. This is Likshuven och Barbaren by uh, Sam Keen. And the English title is The Tale of the Dueling 
neurosurgeons. The history of the human brain as revealed by true histories of trauma, madness and recovery. And that's the, basically what it is, a book about brain science. And again, I do like science books and I need to get more of them because I have more historical ones. This is also historical, but it's more... Actually, this is also a historical one. Crap. But it's science. And yeah, another one that I've had on my to uh, want to buy list for a while. Then we have a short book, uh, another list book. And this is uh, Vals Historians Mark Liske... Uh, Mark... Blah, blah, blah. Vers Historians Marklias de Experiment by Niels Baye Orr. Now this is, the, the, uh, the title will translate to World History, The World History's Most Strangest Experiments or something like that. And it's about experiments. More about this. It's a list book, it's pretty short. And again, I have wanted to read this one actually. And I haven't managed to find it on my library, so... When it was like for 19 Swedish crowns, I got it. This, by the way, the non-fiction part, that's what I was going to end up with on the last one. And obviously those are still the full piles in front of me. So let's continue with non-fiction. And this one is Okända fakta och Udde historia om första världskriget by Niklas Hammansson. And this is about, let's just see, has this been translated? I don't think it has. No, it has not. Uh, this is um, unknown facts and strange uh, stories about the First World War. Um, a lot of, now this author has also published one about the Second World War and I did consider getting it, but I do have books about the Second World War. So, uh, so I felt like, let's just get some from the first one. So the next one I have is um, one that randomly was still left here on the table and that is Blood and Whispers by A.C. Haskins and this is the first book in the A Soldier of the Arcanum series and this follows, uh, what was his name, Thomas Quinn who is a retired sorcerer for the uh, Arcanum and he is disillusioned with it and things like that. He has done some horrible things and just keeps on running his uh, occult shop. And one day two detectives come to him and ask for his help and since yeah, it was a brutal ritual murder in his city, he must take up the mantle of the Sorcerer of the Arcanum once more. And then something about inner demons. Yeah. Honestly, this, they actually had the um, big uh, paperback, like the um, tall trade paperback on sale, but someone had gotten it, so I just got the mass market that I came out, come out. Okay, books have actually fallen down now, once or twice, so let's just put all these down and start with a new round, shall we? I think I have the rest of the books in front of me. If I do not, they will just be part of April's or actually since I'm filming April's after this May. So I think I have all the rest of the books that I've gotten in March in front of me. If I do not they will be part of May's one because I'm filming April's right after this one. Great. So I have the middle grade trilogy Hallehem here and this is a Swedish um, metal um, folklore inspired one and this is written by Susanne Trudal and Daniel Olin and this one f uh, takes place well it follows Turun who is a uh, resident in a city under the mountain as the first book title says and she well it's a city of Vitro and she overhears some adults there has been some unrest and she overhears some adults talk about how this one human girl is the solution, like could save them. And she goes around and find her and Turun herself, Turun, why do I say Turun? Uh, Turun herself don't really feel like she belongs in this city. So the first book is uh, Staden Underbayet, City on the Mountain. 
Steket vid sjön, The Portrayal at the Lake. And Striden i skogen, the, the Fight in the Forest with the Battle in the Woods. The Battle in the Woods sounds better. And let's be honest, these covers look so good. I absolutely love them. And this is a complete trilogy, so I'm happy to have it. And I'm happy that I got it for cheap, but more middle grade. I do enjoy a middle grade now and then, but I have way too many. The next one I got, uh, I definitely got, well, it was cheap, but also because Anne Rice has pretty recently passed away, and that is an Unpissed or an interview with a vampire, which is a very famous, it's extremely famous, and why not get it when I could get it in hardcover? And it does get republished now and then, so yeah, I got this one. Then I don't really know why I can keep on going with this, but I got the Swedish translation of the Dragonborn Share by Tad Williams. And um, in Sweden, that book was split into three, and I have two here. This was at second hand, so I have, uh, well, the Swedish title of this, this book is Tronen of Darkbane, and Hiccups. And part one is Simon Molkow, and this sequel is Simon Pilgrim, as I try to say it in English. And then the last one is uh, Simon Snow something. So that one I need to get as well. But I have these two because I got them. Next I got the other books from that second hand place. And that is, well, it's supposed to be seven books. I got six here because I need to order the next one from US. Here they are. Um, so this is a fantasy series in which the main character who we're following is a dragon named Basil Broketail, which is the title of the first book. And he is a common dragon and his rider is an orphan boy. And they are just waiting to kind of prove their worth in a competition that's hosted every year. But this year there will be no competition because some people are attacking them. And as I said, I have six of the books. First one is uh, Basil Broke Tale. Then we had A Sword for a Dragon, Dragons of War, Battle Dragon, A Dragon at World's End, End and uh, Dragons of uh, Argonath. And honestly, I got them because in all of them, Basil looks like a dinosaur. That was why I was drawn to them and almost the entire series were there. So I got them. <laughs> uh, this series, well, the first book, when was it published? It was a pretty, yeah, 1992. So it's a pretty, it's, it's 30 years to the, this year. But yeah, now I have all of these and let's just put, they can stay there for now. Let's go with the Illumicrate book that I got in, um, that arrived in March. And this is the February book. So you should have gotten it. Yeah. And that is A River Enchanted by Rebecca Ross. And this is a fantasy. I think it's adult um, because of how the synopsis goes, which thankfully. And yeah, it, it should be. And um, we are following a place where something has happened with the spirits and they need to, um, yeah, they need to call down a bard who has the power to return. And, or return this, uh, the missing girls. And it's her childhood enemy, etc., etc. But yeah, so we'll see. Um, it has some beautiful illustrations on the end pages, and the book itself is absolutely stunning. Um, I was half intrigued by this. I don't know if I would actually have purchased this book myself, but I'm intrigued uh, uh, at, uh, at least about it. Then we have the March one. 
the March book and uh, this book we knew what it was and that's Gallant by B. Schwab and this is a, I think it's a standalone but it's about a girl who gets an invitation from someone, an uncle, but when she arrives he died several years ago so the letter has been um, delayed she gets reluctantly offered to stay but she has to follow some rules and then something with doors opening and other worlds something like that the spray edges are really pretty i like them i i knew what book it was because we got told it immediately and i was intrigued enough especially when i looked up how long it is so i was like Let's see, not that it helps, because I don't tend to read these books, apparently. Um, so yeah, we'll see, I don't really know much about, about it. I haven't heard too many people talk about it yet. I heard a lot of people saying that they will read it, but I haven't really heard that many people talking about it yet. But I have also not really been looking at wrap-ups. So the first one I have here, Kasper Holmesbuken, en kronologisk kartlegging av hemliga sällskap och dolda agendor by uh, John uh, Michael Greer. And this is the conspiracy book and it's about different conspir conspiracies and again a list book. I like list books and it has some nice um, uh, uh, pictures in here, uh, so good choice for pictures, at least as I have just been doing like this. Um, I don't know if I will agree with the choice when I read the book. But I have this and I think this will be uh, um, borrowed, maybe, by my sister's boyfriend. But yeah. Um, then I got uh, another book um, and with another one I mean in the same vein as one that I got last year. But I have not read that one so yeah this one actually came out before that one so i think i might read this one first and that's astrobiology by david c Catling and astrobiology this is about how things how life could develop on other planets depending on what they what things happen and this is about the reading uh, leading research when did this come out this come out 2019 so uh, so it would be interesting to see the difference between these books since they tackle the same subject and then I have this one Quantbiologi by Jim Al Khalili and Jan Jo McFadden and yes this is Quant Quantbiology is that a thing yeah, uh, the original title is Life on the Edge, the Coming Age of Quantum Biology. And this is about life, basically. And it does say here on the back, no one has ever managed to create something alive out of dead materia. Life is still the only way to create new life. It sounded too good. Now let's go back to the last two non-fictions that I have here that's more historical base. So the first one is Upplysningens element, materia och världsbild under 1600- och 1700-talet by uh, Jalmar Fors. This is, uh, let's just see if this has been translated. Yes, it has. Um, the limits of matter, chemistry, mining and enlightenment. So this... Hmm... How to put it? This is a book that focuses more on the science aspect of the Enlightenment period, which um, we usually just hear talk about when it comes to philosophy and physics. And this is more about, uh, yeah, like uh, chemistry and well, mining and things like that. So, yes, it sounded good. I got it. This was one of the ones of, that I added because I was like, oh, this sounds good. Let's add it in and let's see if it was still there. And it was. Next one we have, have here is one that I hope is going to be fun. And that is from, from 9 till 5. Och jag fixar rebegravningsklaner och andra ädla antika yrken by Vicky Leon. 
and the English title will translate working from nine to five. Uh, Audio planners, funerary cl clowns and other prize profession from the ancient world. world. And that is what it talks about. I'm hoping that this is going to be fun. This is yet another list book. Is anyone surprised? But it sounded intriguing, so I got it. Okay, let's just see if I can just... I have four books left. Then I'm done. Then I can do the embarrassing complete count. So let's start with a duology where I got both of them. These were on sale for half the price of the sales price. And I actually have the first book at least on Want to Read, and that is Game Changer by Alex Beckett. And then we have Deal Breaker, uh, which is the sequel. What's the duology called? Actually, I have no idea uh, what this series is called. Maybe the Game Changer duology. But in this one, we are following a person who is a member of the Bounce Back Generation. She is a public defender and has met a person named uh, called Luz who is a naysayer but then a lot of people want him in custody and Luz does not want to stop the recovery of the planet. And this one had the first line was like uh oh. So I don't want to remind myself of what that was, but I have the duology. We're talking about adults. I definitely hope it's adults because we have someone that's a public defender. So yeah, I'm intrigued by this and I just love the covers. So putting them there so that I don't need to worry about things falling down. Um, okay, this, I think this is the conclusion. This is the second book to Philosopher's Flight, which I have not read. And Philosopher's Flight follows a man who really wants to become a part of this um, squad in which are paramedics. Uh, however, they are all women because women are the only ones that can fly and you kind of need to fly for this particular squad. And his dream is to become part of it. That's it. I, I don't remember more. I don't want to know more, but I want to read it, but I haven't read it and I don't know why. And this is the sequel because it was half the sale. Like. Then we have the last one, finally. And I have way less books in front of me from the month of Brain Think, from the month of March, holy crap. I've been filming way too long, way too long. And that is Aera, The Return of the Ancient Gods by Marcus Heights. And this is a omnibus of 10 novellas. And I just, I just was so intrigued by this here on the back. So I'm just going to read it. I never believed in any kind of God, but that's a problem when they start manifesting. It was a problem for everyone else too, especially those whose gods did not appear. We are divided a fractured globe because you'd start to question everything you believed, wouldn't you? Or would you fight? Because I don't think these really are the gods we worshipped. Zeus, the Morrigan, Thor, they can go to hell. We're in the middle of an invasion and I'm the only one who believes in that reality. My name is Malesis Burrow. I'm an atheist and an investigator and I will find the answers. We'll see. It has 10 novellas in it, so that's, it's massive. So how many pages? 840 each. It's massive. It sounded so intriguing. Uh, so those are all of the books that I got in March. So many. How many? Let's count. 35. I'm not... Um, I read one of them. <laughs> God, this is great. This is... This is brilliant. 
holy, okay. Did you get any books in March? <laughs> and if you did, at least you don't need to feel bad. <laughs> uh, I remember when uh, Charlotte were all like, I did some damage and I was like, oh, sweet summer child. <laughs> sweet summer child. Uh, but yeah, this is all the books that I got in March. Did you get anything in March? I'll see you next time. Bye. I need to start reading. <laughs>